Hello everyone. In this presentation, we will discuss the triggering of flip-flops. So, what do we mean by triggering of flip-flops? The output of a flip-flop can be changed by bringing a small change in the input signal. This small change can be brought with the help of a clock pulse, commonly known as a trigger pulse. When such a trigger pulse is applied to the input, the output of the flip-flop changes and the flip-flop is said to be triggered. So, the method by which this change in the flip-flop is brought about is known as triggering. Now, the question arises which part of the sequential circuit we have to trigger. Now, we know that a sequential circuit is nothing but it is a combinational circuit with a memory. So, if we are having a combinational circuit and input is given to it, then the output will be generated. Now, the state of this combinational circuit is stored in the memory and this memory is nothing but it is our latch or flip-flop. So, a clock pulse is given to this memory and this clock pulse is actually a controlled input. So, which part of the sequential circuit we have to trigger? We have to trigger this memory element. The state is stored in this latch or the flip-flop and when we give a clock pulse to it, then its state is switched or changed from one state to the other state depending upon the input and the previous state stored in it. It is changed or switched by the change in the controlled input. This clock pulse when changes, it will cause the changes in the latch or the flip-flop as a result of which the stored state of the flip-flop will change. That is, whatever the state of the combinational circuit will be changed depending upon the clock pulse. So, we have to trigger this memory element that is our latch or flip-flop. And this transition we call the triggering of this flip-flop. So, this is what we mean by triggering of flip-flop. Now, let us discuss the different types of the triggering methods. Now, the, for the different positions of the clock, for the different positions of the clock, we have the triggering of our latches or the flip-flop. So, we can divide the triggering methods into two types. The first one is the level triggering and the second one is the edge triggering. In lash triggering, what we are actually having? We find that in level triggering, whenever the clock remains in high, then there will be a transition in our flip-flop or latches. That is, when the clock is high, then there will be transition or change in the flip-flop, in the state of the flip-flop or our latches. Similarly, when this is high here, again there will be a change or transition in the state of the flip-flop. This is known as level triggering. So, whenever we are having the clock as high, then the change in the circuit will happen. Now, let us see what is meant by edge triggering. Edge triggering is of two types. The first one is the positive edge triggering and the second one is the negative edge triggering. So, let us make a clock to understand the positive edge triggering and the negative edge triggering. So, this is our clock. So, this memory element will trigger when this clock goes from low to high. 
this is low and this is high and at this point we find that the clock is low so when the clock goes from low to high then there will be a change in the memory element that is it will switch from one state to the other state similarly again when it is going from low to high there will be a change in the state of the flip-flop so this is known as positive edge triggering now let us see what happens in negative edge triggering so once we have known that what is positive edge triggering then it is easy to understand the negative edge triggering so here we find that the clock is at high and it is going to low so in this case if the clock is high and it goes to low then there will be a change or transition in our memory element similarly at this point we find that it is the clock is again high and when it goes from high to low again there will be a transition in the state of the memory element so if there is a transition in the state of the flip-flop when the clock goes from low to high then it is known as positive edge triggering and when there is a change in the state of the flip-flop when the clock goes from high to low then this is known as negative edge triggering so these are the different triggering methods available to us and it is very important to understand these simple things in order to study our flip-flops so we find that this figure one represents level triggering this is level triggering and the figure 2 represents the positive edge triggering and negative edge triggering. Hope the triggering and the triggering methods are clear to all of you. See you in the next presentation.